Welcome to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, The Health Talk Session. We are here today to answer all your queries related to kidney and dialysis care. Do post your queries on our comment section and we'll get them answered by our expert doctors here. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and let's welcome Dr. Shashikiran, consultant nephrologist from Malakpet Yashoda Hospitals. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, sir, in this pandemic, did you see the kidneys being affected because of the COVID infection? COVID is caused by a virus called uh, SARS-CoV-2. The virus uh, uses a receptor called ACE2 receptor, that is angiotensin convertase enzyme 2 receptor to enter into any cell in the body. These receptors are more in the lung, but they are much more common in the kidney. So uh, they are about 150 times more common in the kidney. So the virus has an opportunity to enter into the kidney and uh, damage the kidney. But fortunately, what we have seen in this pandemic is the level of kidney affection is around 30 percent among the total number of patients. And fortunately, many of them, for many of them who are affected, uh, like the renal manifestations are mild. Only 10 percent of them who have their kidneys affected are needing dialysis. In other words, uh, the need for a dialysis in this pandemic because of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID is very less. It is only 10% among them who have uh, kidney affection. So sir, after recovery, are there any complications related to the kidneys because we have seen um, uh, the clots forming because of the COVID infection. So did you see the clots forming in the renal system as well? Majority of the times when the kidneys are affected um, because of uh, SARS-CoV-2 in COVID, what we see is only a protein loss in urine. That is the commonest manifestation. A little more severe than this is a mild rise in creatinine. The creatinine goes up from the normal uh, to an extent where the kidney function comes down to around 40% of the normal uh, thing. Very few of them are needing dialysis. Once these patients recover, most of them are getting back a normal renal function. We have seen very few patients who are developing who have developed significant protein loss and resulting in nephrotic syndrome that is called focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. We have seen very, very few patients. Uh, we have not seen anybody who have developed renal artery or renal vein thrombosis to date uh, in our hospital. So let's take few questions from our social media platform. Do post your queries and we'll get them answered shortly. So taking the first question, we have Mr. Sharath from Hyderabad. He's asking, if I get kidney disease, will I be on dialysis forever? Kidney lo, jabbu lo, acute kidney injury lo hoite, kidney bagu paddhani ki oka avakash manne duntundi, correct treatment valana. So, if you have a dialysis, you have a treatment for the kidney. If you have a dialysis, you have a dialysis. If you have a chronic kidney disease, you have a group of people who have a kidney, a kidney, a kidney, a Ilanti patient lo, chivari dashalo, vilaku kidney purtiga pade pinapu, dialysis and the osram birthundi. Alanti shanan ninchi will lepu dialysis minane undi poal sustundi. Will do dialysis ninchi bita padaliente, vilakuna, okay, kavakashamo, kidney transplant chest codum. Palakutumbe subulana, like a brain dead donor, everana durkina, vilaku, kidney transplant chest, the upper dialysis ninchi, will do a kumimik durkundi. I think there is a misconception among the general public that if I undergo dialysis for once, then I have to be dialysis dependent for a long time or forever. Absolutely. So this is a great misconception uh, where, uh, and this is the reason why many of them are very scared uh, the moment we advise dialysis for them. But dialysis is a life-saving modality. So whenever the patient with acute kidney injury is needing dialysis, that will save his life. And once his kidneys recover completely, he may be free of dialysis. Whereas in chronic kidney diseases, with appropriate dialysis, his quality of life will be very good. We have patients who are on dialysis with a very good quality of life and who are surviving beyond 10 years. And these patients also have an opportunity to undergo a renal transplant. So dialysis is a life-saving modality. In acute kidney injuries, it is life-saving and it is not a procedure which goes on forever. 
there is a chance, there is a very good chance for them uh, to come out of dialysis with proper treatment. So talking about dialysis sir, we have even uh, young adults undergoing dialysis uh, due to various reasons and be it congenital or any other acquired disorder. How do you think they should plan the travel if at all they have to travel? Like, yeah, this is a very good question. If somebody is on dialysis uh, on a chronic basis, that is they have an end-stage renal disease and they, need, they are dialysis dependent, so you need to plan your travel in the sense like if you are going uh, to some place for a very short period, like for a day or two, it would be easy for you to undergo the dialysis the day before you start traveling and then uh, the moment you come back you get onto the dialysis once again suppose if you are traveling for longer periods like a week or or anything beyond 3 days like it's always better to look for places uh, where you can undergo dialysis at your destination so you are going to a distant place uh, try to get in touch with a doctor or a hospital over there get an appointment see that you continue your dialysis according to the schedule in that place as long as you are there. So this is mostly for hemodialysis patients. Patients who are on peritoneal dialysis where the patients undergo dialysis in their own house where they can do it themselves. So these patients just need to carry their own supplies. Uh, patients who are on automated peritoneal dialysis they have a small instrument with them uh, the, that's called the, uh, the home choice pro sort of machines which they can carry with them which are easily mobile where they need a normal power source so they can go there and have continue their dialysis. Do post your queries related to kidney and dialysis care and we'll get them answered shortly. So moving to the next question we have Mr. Prakash asking us from Guntur. He wants to know if there is any cure for end stage renal disease. Durudur Shavashattu, end stage renal disease ki tablet la dwara gaani Injection led Dwara Kani, Jabuninchi Batavade, Aukashmanedi, Erogetical Ledendi. Kani Miko Kamanchi alternative one is in the Ayamante kidney transplant chest codum. Miko Adrishavshatu, Mikutumamlu, Yoruna, kidney, Chitatunte, Miru kidney transplant chest coachu, whichever donate chest of a lever Leru and Etatunte, Miru brain dead donor Ninchi, kidney transplant chest coachu, Din Dwara, me. Uh, Ayushu and the lifespan and the Chalaku and the quality of life Chalaba and the Mir Marimi jobs chess coach, me business chess coach, Miroka hospital co, Prithi Rendoroju Vella Osara Mundadu, Mundala Kokasar Veli, check up chess coni, Mandalwar Kunte, me life Chala easy gaunt in the productive gaunt in the Kabati cure Ledgani, Okamanchi alternative in the alternative a kidney transplant. So sir, talking about kidney transplant, in your personal clinical experience, how much percent of patients have undergone no, renal transplant and what is the success rate? Let me put it this way. Uh, the number of patients who are undergoing dialysis is enormous. Uh, there is a huge, but there is a very limited supply of organs. So there are very few patients who have a member in their family who can donate a kidney and there are very few donations from uh, brain dead donors. So there is a huge disparity between the demand and supply. Now coming to a number of uh, transplants uh, that we are doing over here, we do an, an average one to one and a half transplant every week that comes to around 50 to 75 transplants in a calendar year. Uh, the success rate as far as these transplants is more than 95 percent. So many of these patients, they go back within 10 days of uh, undergoing a transplant and uh, the average lifespan of the organ once they undergo a transplant is close to 15 to 20 years. Taking the next question, we have Mr. Rajesh from Sikindrabad. He is a gym trainer and he wants to know if having high protein diet affects the kidneys. So as far as uh, diet and kidneys are concerned, anybody who has, who is, who has a, uh, no comorbidities, they can pretty much take uh, any diet. A balanced diet would be the best. Balanced diet is somewhere uh, which contains around six, 50 to 60 percent uh, calories from carbohydrates, uh, 20 to 30 percent from fats and the remaining from proteins. So if you have a comorbidity, if you are a diabetic, if you, if you are a low birth weight child, uh, if you have hypertension, if you smoke, if you are obese, if you have a family history of kidney failure, uh, then a uh, high protein diet is something uh, which is not recommended which can be detrimental and the protein content in the diet should not be beyond uh, 10 to 15 percent uh, of the calories. 
So sir, now talking about diets, we have various diets now like the keto diet, the GM diet. So is there any specific diet you, you suggest for uh, patients who are uh, suffering with uh, kidney disease? So this keto diet or uh, Atkins diet, all these diets are diets where they have a very high protein content. Uh, this diet came into picture because uh, these diets help the patient to lose weight immediately. So that is the reason why these diets came into vogue. Many people started using these diets where uh, the protein content is much high, the carbohydrate content is much less. So what happens is uh, there has been an overdue or overkilling of this, uh, these diets. Uh, the protein content what was suggested earlier to be somewhere around 20% kept on increasing to 25, 30 and 35%. Exactly what I have told is once the protein content is more in the diet, more than 25 to 30%, the kidney has to work much harder. It has to filter much more and that's the reason why it gets tired early and gets damaged early. So if you are on a keto diet or an Atkins diet for a long period, there is a very high chance for your kidneys to get damaged and unfortunately it may get damaged permanently. And these things are much more pronounced if you have another comorbidity, especially a diabetes or a hypertension or if you have a low nephron number because of being a low birth white child or if you are, if you are a smoker or if you are an obese person or have a family member in, uh, who has a kidney disease. So it's always better to avoid such high protein diets uh, for a long period of time. Though this can be fashionable or this can reduce your weight immediately, but in the longer run it's very detrimental and you would repent for it. So do post your queries on our social media network and we'll get them answered shortly. So moving to the next question, we have Mr. Karthik asking us from Chennai. He wants to know, are there any specific tests to be done early to identify kidney disease? So this is a very important question. Uh, this is much more relevant if you have a comorbidity. If you are a diabetic or if you are a hypertensive or if you have a family member with renal disease, it's always imperative on your part to get yourself checked uh, to see if you already have a kidney disease. The reason being many a times kidney diseases are very silent. They don't cause any trouble and they go unnoticed. Unless otherwise the kidney is damaged to a very large extent of 60 to 70 percent, it doesn't show any symptoms. So that's the reason why if you have a risk factor, it's always important that you discuss with your doctor and get yourself tested for it. Now when, when we come to the tests as such, the number of tests that you need to do uh, to screen if you have a kidney disease are very, very uh, small in number and they are very inexpensive. All that need, you need to get it done is to get your blood pressure checked to see that if it is normal, get your urine checked to see if there is any protein loss in urine, if there are any red blood cells in your urine or to see if there is any abnormal uh, uh, um, uh, leukocytes in your urine. The other test is a blood test to check if your kidney is functioning normally. We call this test as a serum creatinine test to see if the kidney is functioning well or not. Another th test that we would suggest is to get an ultrasound examination of your abdomen. This will tell if you have two kidneys, if they are proper in place, if they look normally, if their size is normal, if they have any tumor or any other cysts in that. So sir, talking about the renal test, apart from this, what are the general lifestyle modifications one should uh, consider if one is suffering with kidney disease? If somebody is already suffering from a kidney disease, uh, there are few things that you need to be very vigilant about. As far as the lifestyle modifications are concerned, the first and foremost would be an abstinence from smoking completely and to a large extent from alcohol. These are the two important things uh, when it comes to lifestyle modification. The other important one is to have an active lifestyle in the sense uh, try to do some moderate aerobic exercises for at least 30 minutes five times in a a week if your renal function is, uh, if your kidney disease is not very severe, uh, like if you are in the first and second stages of kidney disease. But if you are in the later stages of kidney disease, physical activity may be, may not be possible for you. It may cause breathing difficulty and also always check with your doctor if you can do your physical activity. The other important thing is to avoid uh, over-the-counter painkillers. If you have any pain or anything, always better to consult your doctor, get yourself examined 
look for the cause of the pain and then he would be the best person to advise. Because over the counter painkillers may worsen your renal function much more rapidly and it may push you towards dialysis much more earlier. The other important thing is the dietary modifications. Protein as little as possible is number one. Number two is salt as little as possible. The maximum amount of salt that you can have in a day is around uh, four to five grams. Uh, an average Indian diet would comprise somewhere around 10 to 15 grams of salt. So to give you roughly, you should cut it down to one third of what the normal family is using. Uh, another one is to cut down on on, on foods which have very high uh, potassium content. So avoid fruits, avoid fruit juices, don't take coconut water and, and you have to practice leaching when you are using vegetables. That is you have to cut the vegetables, soak them in water for 10 to 15 minutes before you cook them and use. And uh, uh, if you follow these things, uh, most of the times your kidney will work for a very long period, the need for dialysis which will come much later in your life. So sir, I think that's an important point about the painkiller because many of us like they just pop a pill even for a slight pain, not realizing its impact on the kidney in the long run. So moving to the next question, we have Mr. Dharmesh from Hyderabad. He says that her mother is diabetic and what are the preventive measures one should take to protect the renal functions? The first and foremost thing if you have diabetes is to see that your blood sugar is under good control, as good control as possible. That is the first and foremost thing. The second important thing is to see that you discuss with your doctor to see if you have any high blood pressure or a protein leak in urine. If there is a protein leak in urine, if you have a high blood pressure, there are some medicines which can help your kidney to save your kidney. So there are some drugs which your doctor will prescribe which will protect your kidney and see that it, it doesn't progress to a stage where you will be needing dialysis or a transplant. The second important thing is to see that you don't abuse uh, drugs which are harmful to the kidney. See that your blood pressure is under very good control. Don't smoke. And in the unfortunate instance of needing a dialysis or a transplant, then you can undergo a transplant. Many a times patients with diabetes, they are afraid that they have diabetes, their wounds won't heal. Are they eligible to undergo a transplant? A patient with diabetes can undergo a transplant provided his heart is functioning well. So a transplant is a very good alternative for these patients. It's a procedure where you, the kidney is placed into the body, it is attached into the body. We give some medicines to see that it doesn't get rejected and also we give some medicines to see that you don't catch up an infection once you undergo a transplant. So sir, is there any advice you would like to give to the general public? Because I think kidneys is one of the most neglected organs. There's nothing specific as such uh, to protect your kidney. If you have a healthy lifestyle in the form of uh, a regular exercise of at least 45 minutes, uh, five days in a week, uh, a balanced diet, don't get addicted or don't abuse uh, painkillers. Uh, smoking is something which is very harmful, uh, not just for your lungs and heart, but also for the kidneys in the sense it, it causes not just uh, kidney failure, it can also cause urinary bladder cancers and uh, renal cell carcinomas. So uh, smoking is something which you should avoid. And uh, regular checkup is something which is necessary, a health checkup, especially if you have uh, some comorbidities, at least once in a year if you get your uh, kidneys checked. Uh, to a large extent, uh, you can avoid renal diseases. So this brings us to the end of this session. Hope all your queries were answered by our doctors here. Do join us on to our next episode next Sunday.